We kick things off with the defending 6A Division I state champion, North Shore Mustangs. Who could forget the Mustangs' improbable last second victory over Duncanville on a Hail Mary pass on the game's final play to claim the crown? North Shore returns more star power than any NASA scientist could ever envision. Senior running back Zach Evans is hailed as one of the top high school players in the entire nation after rushing for 1,700 yards and 29 touchdowns as a junior. Toss in a tandem of juniors, quarterback Demetrius Davis and wide receiver Shadrach Banks, and the Mustangs should once again post video game type numbers on offense. Head coach John Kay does have to replace eight starters on the defensive side of the ball, but there's little debate that North Shore enters the season as the team to beat in Class 6A. Among the teams lining up to challenge North Shore this year is Atascacita. The Eagles also return an explosive quarterback receiver duo in Bryce Matthews and Dylan Robinson. Robinson hauled in 16 touchdown catches a year ago, while Matthews is a dual threat who can dazzle with both his arm and feet, combining for 41 total scores in 2018. With 17 returning starters, expect this perennial power to fly high once again in 2019. No area program can boast its tradition more than Katy, and the Tigers are on the prowl once again in 2019. Katy comes off of an 11-2 campaign in which both of the Tiger losses were to North Shore. Katie quickly has the chance to avenge those defeats as the Tigers open the season against the Mustangs on Thursday night. Senior signal caller Bronson McClellan returns to lead the Tigers this year after tallying 27 total touchdowns a year ago. Our team that was played in 2005 when Andy Dalton was a senior, uh, we didn't have a, you know, a Division I running back then. We threw the ball, but you do what you're capable of doing. We're more capable of throwing the ball than throw the ball. You know, but. A lot more of throwing the ball than just, you know, the quarterback and receivers. It's got to be able to protect him, too. There's a changing of the guard at rival Cinco Ranch, where Chris Dudley replaces longtime head coach Don Clayton. Dudley inherits a young but talented Cougar squad. As he returns to the school, he spent his coaching career at until 2018. Coach Clayton has been, uh, you know, one of my mentors, obviously. He built a, a football program that is one of the elite ones in the, in the Houston area. and. You know, we, we had a good run over the over those 20 years, building it from scratch all the way up to uh, what, what it is now. I'm fired up, you fired up! What? One of the area's biggest surprises in 2018 was Katie Tompkins. After winning just five games in the program's first four years of existence, the Falcons went 10 and three while reaching the playoffs for the first time. The Falcons' high-flying offense features senior running back R.J. Smith to rush for 30 touchdowns and nearly 2,400 yards and junior quarterback Jalen Milrow, who threw for 10 scores and ran for 10 more. We learned that we can make it that far and we can do what we all want to accomplish. And making it that far, is, it was history for the, the whole school. So really, they're like dreams do come true. Our brotherhood is, is growing at the program. If you have a question, you ask the brother, the, the, your brother uh, next to you. We're just constantly just uh, trusting each other and buying into the process. The Ridgepoint Panthers enter 2019 riding a 24-game district winning streak dating back to October of 2015. With 13 returning starters, including nine on offense, look for a veteran group of Panthers to keep Ridgepoint near the top of the 26A standings once again. All right, we are All right. Ricky Tullis' first season at Pearland began with a boom as the Oilers won a perfect 10-0 in the regular season. But 2018 ended on a sour note as Pearland lost to Dickinson in the first round of the playoffs. Expect the Oilers to be hungry this fall, led by senior quarterback J.D. Head, who returns after throwing 24 touchdown passes a year ago. <laughs> Speaking of Dickinson, the Gators returned some key members from an offense that averaged more than 41 points a game a year ago. Most notably, for the first time in John Snelson's eight seasons, as Dickinson's head coach, he returns his starting quarterback. Mike Welch looks to build off a junior campaign in which he threw for 2,400 yards and 25 touchdowns while also rushing for 17 scores. 
He's the centerpiece of a veteran core returning for the Gators. I have a lot of confidence going into this new season. All the returning veterans that we have back is, is good. We're going to have probably either good timing or better timing than we had last year. Skill positions are going to be strong. We've got some really good veteran leadership coming back, you know, and so uh, we're excited. Lamar looks to continue its reign atop HISD after capturing another district title in head coach Mike Lindsay's first season running the Texans program after taking over following the retirement of the legendary Tom Nolan last summer. Senior quarterback Troy Tisdale returns to lead Lamar after tallying 25 total touchdowns in 2018. After capturing a state title in 2017, Cy Fair showed little signs of a hangover in 2018, going 11 and three and reaching the 6A Division I Region Three final. Ed Pajomski is back for his 39th season coaching at Cy Fair, and not surprisingly, should once again have the Bobcats in the thick of the district race in 17-6A. Running back LJ Johnson is a rising talent after rushing for 1,100 yards and 20 touchdowns as a sophomore last season. Cy Ranch reeled off a perfect 10-0 regular season in 2018, and the Mustangs look to continue that pace again this fall. The dynamic running back duo of Willie Eldridge and Elias Pino returns, as does all-district quarterback Logan McDougal. Sean McAuliffe takes over as the Mustangs head coach after a successful tenure at Converse Judson. Klein Collins captured the district title in the highly competitive 15-6A last year in Adrian Mitchell's first season as the Tigers head coach. Klein Collins has long prided itself on a ferocious defense and the Tigers' D should once again be the calling card in 2019. We like to say that our defense is going to be the backbone of the team. And our defense is going to be strong every year. Offensively, we're not going to, we're not hurting, but uh, you know, we, we love to rest it on the defense and we're going to put it on those guys and special teams are going to be solid and offense is going to give them to get done. Blind Collins is expected to once again battle it out with the Woodlands for district supremacy. The Highlanders returned 16 starters, including a pair of explosive playmakers, Brighton Guilford and Malik Johnson. Definitely keep an eye on the Woodlands in 2019. We will not be beat. We will not be beat. We wrap up our tour of Class 6A schools with the Westfield Mustangs. Last year, the Mustangs reeled off a 10-game winning streak after a non-district loss to North Shore, with the defense holding opponents to just 10 points a game during that stretch. With just three returning starters on offense, look for Westfield to again rely on a stingy defense as the Mustangs look to claim another district title. Moving down to Class 5A Division I, the Shadow Creek Sharks reached the state title game in their first season of varsity football last year. After proving they were ready to swim with the big boys, the Sharks returned 14 starters, including the core of a ferocious defense. It's our defense. We swarm the ball, we're going to run to the ball, we're going to be physical fast, and we're going to execute. We just need to keep working hard, you know, keep everybody on the same page. We got one goal, and that's to win the state championship, so we're going to just keep fighting after that goal until we do it. Among Shadow Creek's leading challengers in the loaded district is Foster. The Falcons are no strangers to deep postseason runs and they returned 15 starters from last year's regional finalists, including quarterback Ryan Stubblefield, who threw for 2,700 yards and 33 touchdowns a year ago. Fort Bend Marshall reached the 5A Division II state title game in 2018, and the Buffs returned the core of an offense that averaged 49 points in Marshall's 15 wins. Senior quarterback Malik Hornsby threw 23 touchdown passes last season and rushed for another 13 scores despite playing in just 12 games. All-purpose back Devon Achain threw a touchdown, rushed for 30, caught seven more, and even had five return touchdowns. Look for another Buffalo Stampede again in 2019. I believe that we have a chance to be better than the team we did last year. We know the loss, the uh, upset we had at State last year, so we plan to go back there and win it this time. These guys are very prideful in what they do, and uh, they're a family. That's a great part about this program is the culture we built in this program is, is they're a family. And so they, uh, they did a tremendous job last year, depending, uh, despite the adversity you know, we dealt with, and uh, 
you know, I'm proud of their accomplishments, but you know, at this point in time, we got to move on from that and we got to focus on the next year. Two years removed from a state championship appearance, Manville looks to challenge Marshall to top the district standings. The Mavs return just six starters, but should be a fun team worth keeping an eye on once again. In Class 4A, Seeley looks to build off a 12-1 season and a district championship. The Tigers return 12 starters and should be a force to be reckoned with in Class 4A in 2019. In Class 3A, East Bernard is fresh off a state semifinal appearance in 2018. The Bramas return nine starters from that 13-2 club and remain a threat to play into December once again this season.